Hello everyone, welcome back to another GIS mathematics lecture video. And in this lecture video, I want to go back to this idea of the matrix minor and the cofactor. And I want to talk in this case about the cofactor. And so the best way to talk about the cofactor is to talk about the equation that defines the cofactor as it relates to this matrix minor here. And so just to recap, right, the matrix minor we said is a subset of the mat of matrix created by removing one row and one column. And we said that you designated that with whatever the matrix letter variable you're using, in this case we were talking about A, with an I and a J, where I was the row that we were going to ignore and J was the column that we were going to ignore. And so we went through these three sort of examples with a, with a stylized matrix here. And we went through one example here looking at actual numbers. So what I want to do now is I want to talk about this idea. I'm going to give myself a little bit of room here. And I want to talk about this idea of the cofactor. And so what the cofactor is, and we designate the cofactor with a large C, an I and a J. Right, so this giant C here, right, this means cofactor. So we're taking the cofactor of a matrix. Again, I is going to be just like before, right? This is the row we ignore. And this is the column we ignore. Right, so this looks exactly the same, All right? But what looks different here is what we actually do to get the cofactor. So the cofactor, we have this negative one here raised to the power of I plus J, right? So now, right, I and J are coming back on this side and then we're multiplying this by the determinant, right, the determinant of our matrix minor of A, I, J. Right, so we're taking this matrix that we have and we're calculating the determinant of it, multiplying that by negative one raised to whatever power this is, and that's going to give us what's called our cofactor. And the reason that we're doing this is because this definition right here of cofactor is going to play a major role in how we approach calculating the determinant of larger matrices, right? Because again, if we expand beyond two by two, we have yet to know how to approach that. This cofactor is going to be the first key step in doing that. So let's go ahead and look at our example matrix B. Scrolling up just a little bit here. I'm going to copy it back down here so we can give ourselves more room. So we have this matrix B, and we're going to have 3, 7, 8, 2, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. All right, so this is, our, this is our matrix that we're going to work with. I'm going to scroll back down just a little bit. And I want to go through an exam examples of these cofactors. So let's go ahead and let's look at the cofactor. So we're going to, again, we're going to put C here, designating the cofactor. Let's look at the cofactor of 2, 3, okay? So again, we're looking at the cofactor 2, 3. So what is this actually going to look like? So it's going to look like negative 1, right, raised to the power, right, i is the row we ignore. So that's going to be this 2 here, All right, plus j is the column that we're ignoring, which is this 3 here. 
right? And then we're multiplying that by the determinant of A, right? And again, this is going to be the matrix minor, 2, comma, 3. Okay. So this is our equation for the, for again, for the cofactor of 2, 3. It's negative 1 raised to 2 plus 3 times the determinant of 2, of the matrix minor 2, 3. So this actually, this actually should be B because our matrix is B here. Okay. So let's take a look and see what we're looking at. I'm going to remove the colors here. Okay, so we have negative 1 raised to the fifth power times the determinant of, and I'm going to put the matrix minor in here. So the matrix minor is going to be ignoring row 2. So to sort of recap that, right, we're ignoring this row here. And it's ignoring column 3, which is this column here. Right, so our matrix minor is going to be 3, 7, 1, 2. Right, so we're taking the determinant of this matrix, which we already know how to do because it's a 2 by 2. So if we do the cofactor of 2, comma 3 is going to be equal negative 1 to the fifth. So because this power is odd, this negative is going to be retained, right? Because it's negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, right? Because we're multiplying that an odd number of times, the answer is going to be negative 1 times, right, the determinant of 3, 7, 1, 2. Let's do this over here for a second, right? 3, 7, 1, 2, right? We know how to handle that. That's going to be equal to 3 times 2 minus 7 times 1, right? A times D minus B times C. That's 6 minus 7 or negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1. So if we do that, we're going to get a value of 1. Right, so our cofactor, right, the cofactor of ij in this case is going to be 1. Let's go through one more example. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy everything up here. I'm gonna copy it. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Okay, so we're going to use the same matrices. We're going to use the same equation. But what I want to do is I want to look at the cofactor. Again, we put a C here because we're talking. All right, the cofactor of B, we're going to look at, let's look at, how about, how about 3, comma, 1. So if we do that, we get negative 1, right, raised to the i plus j. So that's going to be 3 plus 1, right, times the determinant. of this idea of B, right, because we're looking at B here, the matrix minor of B, 3, comma, 3, comma, 1. Right, and so if we do that, Right, negative, we get this. So C, again, I'm just going to remove the 
colors now. All right, negative 1 raised to 3 plus 1 is 4 times the determinant, the matrix minor of B31. To sort of recap what that looks like, right, we're ignoring the third column, which is this column here. Um, and we're ignoring the first row, which is this. I'm going to use solid lines. That way we don't get confused from our previous example, right? So we're going to use solid lines here since this is the last example we're going to do. And so what we're left with is this matrix here. So the determinant of 7, 8, 4, 5. Right, so this is the matrix minor 3, uh, three 1 for B. So if we do this, right, negative 1 to the 4th, because this is a, an even um, exponent, right, the negative becomes positive. So this becomes 1 times right, the determinant of 7, 8, 4, 5. We can do that over here. 7, eight, four, five, All right? So we do a times d, that's seven times five, minus b times c, that's eight times four, All right? That's 35. This is gonna be eight times four is 32, All right? So if you do the math on that, you get three, so 1 times 3, right, the cofactor of 3, 1 is going to be 3. Right, again, to sort of recap that, right, the cofactor, we designate a row and column that we're going to ignore, just like when we were doing the matrix minor. And in fact, right, that's because we are actually going to use that matrix minor, calculate its determinant, multiply it by either a positive or a negative one, depending on whether this is even or odd, to give us our cofactor. And we went through two examples. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, you may already be wondering, well, what happens with a four by four matrix or a five by five matrix where this determinant of B <laughs> or A would be a larger than two by two? Because again, we still don't know how to solve the determinant of a two by two matrix. Right, or sorry, of anything larger than a two by two matrix. So if it's not two by two, we have no idea how to take the determinant yet. All we've done is defined this thing called the matrix minor and cofactor. So in the next video, we'll talk about something called cofactor expansion that takes this idea of a cofactor and turns it into the ability to solve for the, de for the determinant. So hopefully that makes sense. And if you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you.